Stealth is without a doubt one of the most popular playstyles in Horizon. But even though you might understand the basics, there's a bunch of subtle mechanics and clever tricks you need to know to truly maximize the playstyle. Plus, even if stealth isn't really your thing, it's pretty critical in the early stages of the game, especially on higher difficulties. So let's break down all the essential tips, find the most important skills, learn how enemies detect Aloy, and even check out some secret mechanics and special tricks to take your stealth combat to the next level. Let's start with some fundamental mechanics and essential tricks. First, stealth bonuses from skills, outfit and weapon perks, weaves, and weapon coils only work when enemies are in the unaware or suspicious states, when their eyes are blue or yellow. For humans, you can get a color indicator by tagging them with the focus. To prevent enemies from going into red combat mode, we need to remain undetected. So the most important stealth skill is low profile, which reduces your visibility dramatically. We want to get low profile as close to its max level of four as as possible. This also stacks with crouching, which reduces visibility by 10% and is totally silent while moving around. Silent Strike is another cornerstone of the stealth playstyle. Aloy gets this ability by default, and if you see a little skull icon next to the prompt, it means you'll kill the enemy in one shot. Now, even though the animations might seem like they should attract attention, Silent Strike really is totally silent. So as long as enemies aren't looking at you, they won't notice. And even if an enemy has just become alerted, if you're quick, you can actually still pull off a silent strike. There's also a couple of silent strike variations. Strike from above is a stylish way to perform a silent strike from a high ledge, tight ropes, or even while gliding. Strike from below is actually more powerful as it will always result in a kill regardless of the enemy's health. Now, when using a bow from stealth, you may have noticed that as long as you don't deal too much damage in one shot, you can hit an enemy once without triggering their combat mode. The threshold is 35% of their total health. This works on all difficulties except ultra hard, and you should definitely take advantage of it. You can either get two powerful shots in as an opener, or if you're patient, you can get in a bunch of cheeky shots by waiting for them to drop back down to the unaware state before each one. But if you hit an enemy at any point while they're in the yellow suspicious state, they'll become fully alerted and go into combat mode. Also, be aware that triple notch on a hunter bow and double notch on a sharp shot bow count as more than one hit, so they'll immediately alert an enemy. But if you can manage to tear off a component with a single arrow, you can get away with stealthily collecting upgrade resources. Of course, stealth is all about avoiding detection, so to optimize your stealth gameplay, we need to understand how enemies detect Aloy. Machines and humans detect with both sight and sound. They see in a wedge shape fanning out from their eyes, and this wedge has an outer and inner zone. If they detect Aloy in the outer suspicion range, they'll become suspicious. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. While suspicious, they'll investigate by coming closer or sometimes using radar scanning if they have it. Now, if Aloy enters the alerted zone, they'll go into combat mode, indicated by their eyes turning red. The suspicion and alerted ranges vary depending on a machine's size. Lightweight and midweight machines see a maximum of 30 meters and both become alerted at 12. Heavies see a maximum of 50 meters and are alerted at 25. You can pop a waypoint marker down to get a feel for how far these distances are. If you're on ultra hard, all of these ranges get doubled. So among other reasons, it's much harder to play stealthy on ultra hard. Now in Zero Dawn, if you spend too much time in a machine's suspicion range, even if you never enter the alerted range, they eventually become alerted. But in Forbidden West, you can hang out in a machine's suspicion range as long as you want. Of course, they're probably going to come towards you to investigate, but if you can manage to stay far enough away, break line of sight, or hide in tall grass, they won't attack. Machines also have terrible peripheral vision. If you crouch, you can get right up to their side and they won't notice you. However, if you stand and walk, they will easily hear you. All machines, regardless of their size, detect sound in a 20 meter radius in any direction. We've already mentioned the unaware, suspicious, and alerted states, but there's a couple others you should be aware of. If you break line of sight with an enemy mid-combat, they'll enter the lost line of sight state. You won't really notice this in their eye color, but you can see this with the awareness indicator or a marker from focus tag them. After losing line of sight, they'll search around the last spot they saw you and may also use ranged attacks on that location. If they have it, they'll probably also use radar 
start to detect you. Also, even though they don't know exactly where you are, homing attacks such as the Thunderjaw Discs or Fireclaw Lava Eruptions can still track you. After about 5 to 15 seconds, depending on the difficulty level, they'll drop down to the yellow suspicious state again and eventually down to the blue unaware state. Now, there is one more state to discuss, but we'll save that for later. Right now, I've got a couple of notes on human enemies. Their visual and auditory perception works very similar to machines, but they see further, out to 70 meters. However, unlike machines, their sight and hearing is affected by the time of day and weather. At night, they get a 20% vision penalty, but only outside. In caves or other indoor areas, it's unaffected. In heavy rain or wind, their hearing range is reduced by 25%, down to 15 from their normal 20. While suspicious, humans can call up to two allies to come help search for you. You can actually take advantage of this by throwing rocks or explosive ammo like blast sling bombs to purposely lure them together. Then you can use area of effect attacks like acid or fire bombs to damage them all at once. Machines will also call to each other when they detect you. All machines can do a local call. This alerts nearby enemies making them suspicious, but doesn't give them your exact location and won't put them into combat mode. Recon machines, so burrowers, watchers, sky drifters, and long legs perform a special two-step call. It happens pretty quickly, but if you can manage to interrupt or destroy them before they get the second call off, you can prevent other machines from becoming alerted. If you're in a fight with multiple machines, as long as one can see you, they'll share your location with others, so it can become very difficult to regain stealth when fighting multiple enemies. Okay, now let's figure out the most important stealth skills. We already mentioned that low profile is the most important one. At max level 4, it reduces enemy visual range by half. Combined with an additional 10% visibility reduction from crouching, this is highly useful for sneaking up to and around enemies. You'll definitely want the two low profile passive skills unlocked in the infiltrator tree. The other two levels can either come from outfit perks or weaves that can be used on any outfit. The low profile plus one weave is in Scalding Spear and the plus two version is on the Tanakh Tactician outfit for sale in Thornmarsh. You can also make it harder for enemies to hear you by leveling up the quiet movement skill, but you can always get silent movement for free by simply crouching. So quiet movement isn't really a high priority skill. Quiet Spear on the other hand is more useful, especially when infiltrating rebel camps because it makes regular spear attacks quieter. That's useful when you might not be able to kill an enemy with a single silent strike. In that case, immediately following up with a power attack will usually knock an enemy down, allowing you to finish them with a critical strike. Speaking of silent strike, the silent strike plus skill provides a nice boost to its damage, so those are definitely good passive skills to pick up. At level 4 and with the enduring spear upgrade, a silent strike will deal 660 damage. But even just at level 2, it's strong enough to kill many early human enemies and small machines in one shot. Don't confuse Silent Strike Plus with Silent Strike Gain though. Silent Strike Gain provides both weapon stamina and valor when using Silent Strikes. The stamina gain is the most valuable benefit, but valor gain is helpful when trying to prolong the Stealth Stalker Valor Surge. On the flip side, we have Silent Strike Heal, which isn't so great. On paper, healing and even overhealing at max level when using Silent Strike sounds pretty good, but in practice, it really isn't that useful. Plus, it can actually be a hindrance if you're trying to leverage the powerful low health range skill for a hybrid build, like I show in my ultimate stealth builds video. You will want to consider maxing out stealth range plus and stealth tear plus for their 40% and 50% boosts to impact and tear damage. Stealth tear plus is more important in the early and mid game when you need to harvest key upgrade resources like a thunderjaw tail, but don't have very good tear weapons. Later, as you get better tear weapons, stealth tear plus becomes less important and stealth range plus becomes a bit more beneficial as you'll have weapons with higher impact damage that stand to gain more from the 40% boost. Our final stealth skill is smoke bomb capacity. We'll talk more about them later, but being able to carry a maximum of 12 smoke bombs with this skill maxed out is really nice, though I wouldn't say it's totally necessary. So the most important stealth skills are low profile, stealth range plus, stealth tear plus, and silent strike plus. Quiet spear and silent strike gain are also nice to have at max level if it works for your build. Silent strike heal can be problematic and smoke bomb capacity is nice, but not really necessary. There are some skills from other trees that enhance stealth as well. Critical Strike Plus and Power Attack Plus are both helpful to boost that Silent Strike combo we mentioned earlier. I wouldn't prioritize it early on, but Food Duration is also helpful when using food to temporarily level up stealth skills. Good stealth foods include Wheat Slice Salad, Wings of the Ten, Land and Lake, and Spicy Beanweed Morsels. You can find a list of all foods, their effects, and locations in the resource database that I link in all my video descriptions. In the Hunter tree, 
all the concentration skills are helpful for lining up shots from stealth. But perhaps the best non-stealth skill to consider is low health ranged. At level 4, this gives you a whopping 80% damage boost when below 50% health. It might seem counterintuitive, but purposely playing at low health levels can be highly effective and is a simple way to gain a massive damage boost early on when your weapons are really weak. I break down how to use low health range safely and effectively in my low health playstyle video, which I'll link below. We also have a few new types of cover out here in the West, and they all work the same as tall grass. These include underwater kelp, concealing omen fungi, and vents inside cauldrons. Those fungi need to be hit with a spear, arrow, or rock to produce a spore cloud. The cloud lasts 15 seconds, and you can refresh it up to three times by holding triangle. Away from these forms of environmental cover, you can create your own by using smoke bombs. These are unlocked early on in the dawn. A smoke bomb will instantly put all enemies in a 35 meter radius into the confused state, which freezes them in place and causes them to lose track of you, essentially de-escalating them down to the suspicious state. You can even stop enemies dead in their tracks with a well-timed smoke bomb. All stealth bonuses from our skills, outfit and weapon perks, and stealth weapon coils will work while enemies are confused. The confused state and smoke bomb cloud last 10 seconds, and you can't use another smoke bomb until this period has passed. The smoke cloud itself can break line of sight, so if you don't have any cover nearby, running directly away with the smoke cloud between you and the enemy is pretty effective. If you're using a smoke bomb to pull off a cheeky silent strike or to get close and override a machine, you'll have to wait for the confused state to wear off. Interestingly, the smoke bomb effect can sort of chain further than the 35 meter radius where the confused state is applied. So in a big group, the enemies within 35 meters will all be confused, but even enemies beyond that will go into the suspicious state and stop attacking. Now you can craft smoke bombs, but I would suggest you simply buy them for 60 shards from hunter merchants to conserve resources. Remember, smoke bombs can be used underwater, and occasionally you'll find smoke drums in the environment, which work exactly the same. While smoke bombs are a new tool in Forbidden West, we also have the classic rock, used to lure enemies towards or away from you. Aloy can't throw rocks even half the distance she could in Zero Dawn, though. This means you need to get closer to the enemy before you can throw the rock within their hearing range, so you just need to be a little more tactical. Oh, and unfortunately, we also don't have the lure call skill from Zero Dawn anymore. But you can use a rock a bit like a lure call by simply throwing it at your feet. It's also a bit unfortunate that rocks tend to only attract one enemy at a time. So a clever rock alternative that my friend Paris came up with is to use blast sling bombs instead. The explosion will attract multiple enemies and you have a lot more range. Of course, this is a bit more expensive, so I'd suggest using elemental bombs since they're pretty cheap to craft. Perhaps the cheapest bomb to use would be adhesive, since adhesive is basically useless otherwise. This still doesn't change the fact that you have to wait for enemies to stop investigating before luring them further though. And it doesn't work very well on machines. All right, now for some advanced tricks. In addition to crouching, sliding is basically totally silent. A good tactic is to slide from one patch of tall grass to another to maintain stealth. But for larger gaps, you can actually chain slides together to move around quickly and quietly. To do this most effectively, you need to turn the auto sprint setting on. Then just spam square and direct your movement with the left stick. You can do this with auto sprint off, but it's not quite as effective. I generally don't recommend using traps or trip wires because they're expensive to craft, but if you do want to use them, it's nice to know that they'll never escalate a machine into combat mode, they'll just remain suspicious. You can use rocks to lure enemies into a trap or trip wire, but if they don't quite get close enough to trigger it, you can hit traps with a rock or any other type of ammo. I prefer an arrow, but a blast sling bomb works well too. Don't forget you can use the spike trap weapon technique on a spike thrower to create traps as well. If I do ever use a trip caster, it's in a more unconventional way. See, if you hit a machine with a trip caster directly, they don't notice it at all and you don't waste any ammo. Seems kind of useless, but if you load up the trip caster with instant chance coils like instant frost, you can actually use a trip caster to apply elemental states for free without alerting the machine. Another slightly glitchy trick is to use strike through precision arrows to deal damage from stealth indefinitely. This got fixed when Burning Shores was released, but if you're on patch 1.18 or earlier, you can hit enemies with strike through arrows from stealth repeatedly and they never go into combat mode. So everyone on PS4 can still use this trick. Now, if you want to see how to create the ultimate stealth builds, you want to check out this video right here, where I show you not only the best possible stealth builds, but also ones you can put together at earlier stages of the game. If you found this video helpful, leaving a like really does help me out. Thanks to my friends Paris, Arg, Twinge, and Speedy for making sure I got all all the best stealth tips in here for you guys. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.